A common use for triggers is to force a table to be updated whenever a row is inserted or updated in another table. And this is usually done to enforce some business rules. For example, in this example, we'll be updating the customer table with a last order ID whenever a sale is made, whenever a new record is inserted in the sale table. And so we're gonna start with creating the tables and creating some customers. And I'm just going to copy and paste this into SID and we'll run it and we can see that we have this customer table that has three customers in it and the last order ID field is null in all of those. We've also created a sale table. Before we insert some sales though, we want to create a trigger. So the way this works is we use the create trigger statement and we name the trigger new sale and the trigger will happen after insert on sale. So first the record will be inserted into sale and then we will perform the statements in the trigger. So the statements in the trigger are bracketed by begin and end, and there is a semicolon at the end of end. There's also a semicolon at the end of each of the statements inside the trigger. So there can be more than one statement in here. For the purposes of this example, there's just the one. And so this statement will update the customer table, and it will set the last order ID column to new ID, and I will get back to that in a moment where customer ID equals new dot customer ID. So new is a pseudo record. It's a virtual table that contains the values from the event that triggered the trigger. In other words, we've inserted something on sale. And so that inserted row in sale is available as new in this virtual table. So the ID field from sale will be this integer primary key. So the ID field will be the ID of the new sale. And so that will be assigned to last order ID, which is exactly what we want to have happen. And customer ID from the new sale row will be the customer ID that we want to update. So we're saying where customer.id equals new.customerID. And when we're all done, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this trigger in the SQLite master table so you can see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the trigger here. I'm just gonna paste this in after all of this. So we have to run this every time because we're using the in-memory database. So each time we run it, it all starts with a fresh database. So I'm going to insert that trigger there. I'll just make a little space here so that, that is easy to see. And so that'll create the table and then we're gonna look at SQLite master. We'll still be displaying this because that was already there. We're just gonna be accumulating results down here. So SQLite master now has the two tables that we've created and it also has this trigger. So triggers appear in SQLite master and this is very important to understand. Triggers are a source of a lot of debugging headaches because they create side effects. The things that happen as a result of a trigger always look like a side effect. So you might be looking at your database and going, oh my God, how come that table's getting updated? when you don't remember or you didn't create this problem in the first place and you're not familiar with the database schema. So looking at SQLite master is a great thing to do because you can see what your triggers are and there's the whole trigger definition right there. So you can find out exactly what it looks like and exactly what's going on in your database. So after we've created this trigger, let's go ahead and insert some sales records. So we're going to insert three sales and then we'll take a look at the sale table and we'll look at the customer table again and we'll see what has happened to the customer table. So I'm gonna paste this in and we'll click go. And now we have the sale table, which has the item ID. And we don't have an item table yet, but it's got an item ID, customer ID, quantity, price, and look at our customer table. Now it has these last order IDs. So the first order, which is ID one, was given to customer number three, and customer number three is Fred, and you can see it's got order ID one. The second one is two, it went to customer number two, and so we have that there, and the third one was three, and it went to customer number one, and so we have that there. So you can see that our customer table is getting updated based on the trigger. So this is getting executed every time we insert something in the sale table. Finally, just so that you know, when you're done with the trigger, obviously in the in-memory database, it's not gonna matter much, but you can say drop trigger and name it. And then I'll just take a look again at the SQLite master table so that we can see that the trigger has been dropped.
Oh, I forgot the from. And there you can see that the trigger is gone because we executed the drop trigger. A trigger can be an excellent way to enforce business rules that require a table to be updated whenever another table is updated.